Our understanding of the electronic behavior in crystalline solids is key to designing modern semiconductor devices. At the same time, the study of electron behavior in crystals has also enlarged our fundamental understanding of how solids behave at the most fundamental level, revealing unexpected phases of matter and unprecedented electronic behaviors. In this video, we begin our study with the basic definitions that characterize the structure of solid crystals. A crystalline solid is characterized by well-ordered and periodically arranged group of atoms. Here, you see the scanning tunneling electron microscope image of sea crystals, where the well-arranged periodic structure of silicon atoms can be seen. Because of the periodic arrangement of ions in crystals, the potential felt by traveling electrons has a special property. Consider the periodic arrangement of atoms shown. Let the potential felt by an electron at an arbitrary location x be v of x. Because of the periodicity of the structure, one can always find a displacement vector, r, such that the local environment around, x plus r, looks exactly the same at the local environment around x. Because of this, the potential felt by electrons at, x plus r, is the same the potential felt by electrons at x. That is, the potential felt by electrons in crystals is periodic in space. Notice that the spatial periodicity of the potential depends on the arrangement of ions composing the crystal. Let's begin by defining some basic concepts about crystal structure. The description of crystal structures is greatly simplified through the concepts of lattices and bases. The crystal lattice is an infinite and spatially periodic array of points as shown. The basis is the smallest unit or group of atoms in a crystals that repeats periodically through space and builds up the entire crystalline solid. In our example, the basis is composed of two atoms, highlighted in green. The entire crystal structure can then be constructed by attaching the basis to each lattice point. In other words, any crystal structure can be constructed by a set of lattice and basis. Now that we establish that the full crystal structure can be described in terms of lattices and bases, we will study their properties individually. In the following, we begin our discussion on crystal lattices. The lattices we employ for describing the structure of crystals have a unique property. The neighborhood of around each lattice point looks the same as viewed from any other lattice points. The triangular, or hexagonal, Lattice shown in the figure is an example of a two-dimensional lattice having this property. Lattices having this property have a special name. They are called Brevet's lattices. The honeycomb lattice is an example of periodic array of points that does not constitute a Brevet's lattice. For example, the vicinity of lattice points A and B of the honeycomb lattice looks different. The A point has two neighboring points to the left and one to the right while point B has two neighboring points to the right and one to the left. In two dimensions, there are only five inequivalent Brevet's lattices. These are the hexagonal, the rectangular center, the oblique, the square and the rectangular lattices. The 2D Brevet's lattices are mainly differentiated by the distance between neighboring points, illustrated by the red lines, and the angles shown in the figure above. Incredibly, the crystal structure of all possible two-dimensional crystals in nature are described by only these five Brevet's lattices. In three dimensions, there are 15 inequivalent Brevet's lattices. But in this video we focus on 2D lattice, for simplicity. The generalization for 3D lattices is straightforward. All points in a Brevet's lattice can be reproduced through a linear combination of primitive vectors, a1 and a2, where the coefficients are integer numbers. The number of primitive vectors is given by the dimensionality, which in this case is 2. Such as the one shown in the figure. The integer linear combinations of lattice vectors constructed in this manner are called lattice vectors. Because lattices are made of small units that repeat periodically throughout the whole space, the full information about the symmetries of a crystal can be confined into a small region of space. Motivated by this observation, we define the concept of unit cell as a small region of space that when repeated periodically it tiles up the entire area or volume of a crystal. Here is what we mean. Consider the blue tile shown in the figure. 
This is a small region of space that tiles up the entire area of the two-dimensional lattices repeated periodically. Therefore, it is a unit cell for the lattice shown in the figure. Notice that the choice of the unit cell is not unique. For instance, the green hexagonal space region also satisfies the definition of unit cell. Note also that both unit cells shown contain exactly one lattice point. This statement is quite obvious for the green unit cell. For the blue unit cell, each one of the four lattice points is one-fourth inside the cell region and three-fourths outside of it. Hence, there's effectively one lattice point for the blue unit cell as well. One can also visualize this by a rigid translation of the blue unit cell. Unit cells containing exactly one lattice point, such as the two unit cells shown, are called primitive unit cell. The green cell, however, is an important example of crystalline unit cell. So important that it has its own name, the wigner zeitz unit cell. It has the property that it is made out of all points in space that are closest to a given lattice point than to any of other lattice points. Although there are innumerable possibilities for unit cells in each crystal lattice, the wigner zeitz unit cell is the only one having this property. To construct a wigner zeitz unit cell around a lattice point, we proceed as follows. First, we link the given lattice point to all its nearest neighbors. Next, we draw new perpendicular lines at the midpoint of each neighbor connecting lines. The space region enclosed by the midpoint crossing lines is the wigner zeitz unit cell. The same procedure can be generalized to three dimensions, where the midpoint line are replaced by midpoint planes. Another important feature of Brevet's lattices, that will turn out to be extremely important in describing the behavior of electrons in crystals, is that one can always associate another Brevet's lattice to it. For example, the triangular Brevet's lattice shown in the left figure has an associated Brevet's lattice which is also triangular, but with primitive lattice vectors rotated by 30 degrees, as shown in the right figure. The lattice associated to a given Brevet's lattice is called the reciprocal lattice. All concepts valid for describing Brevet's lattices we saw before can be equally used to describe the associated reciprocal lattice. For instance, one can also define primitive lattice vectors in reciprocal space, B1 and B2, and unit cells. In particular, the wigner zeitz unit cell of the reciprocal lattice has a special name. The Briel wan zone. The concept of reciprocal lattice arises quite naturally from the point of view that many physical properties of electrons and crystals inherit the periodicity of the crystal lattice. For instance, because of the periodic nature of the potential felt by electrons and crystals, the probability density, p, of finding an electron in a given position x in a crystal must obey the periodicity condition, where r is a lattice vector of a crystal. The periodicity of the probability density enables us to write down a Fourier expansion for it, shown in the green box. It then follows straightforwardly from the two highlighted equations that for all direct lattice vectors are. The following relation holds true. Note that such a condition imply that for each direct lattice vector r there is an accompanying vector g. Hence, the set of all g vectors form a lattice that we define as the reciprocal lattice. Because the G vectors form a lattice, the same formalism for lattices we developed so far is applicable. Given the rule for generating all reciprocal lattice vector points and the set of all direct lattice vectors, it follows that the G vectors can also be written as linear combinations of primitive reciprocal lattice vectors with integer coefficients. This is possible if the primitive vectors composing the direct and reciprocal lattices are related through these identities. They can be shown to obey the general rule by direct substitution. Although the study of lattices go way beyond what we developed so far, the definitions and concepts presented here form the basis for the theoretical minimum to later understand the behavior of electrons and crystals. Hence, we now switch to the discussion of basis. As we saw earlier, the basis is the smallest repeating unit that builds up the entire crystal when attached to each point of a crystal lattice. 
the atoms comprising the basis of the crystal can be located in real space through the basis vectors. For instance, the basis composed of two atoms shown in the figure has basis vectors PA and PB. When attached to every lattice points, we obtain the full crystal structure. Notice that although the honeycomb lattice shown to the right is not a Bravais lattice, as we discussed previously, we were able to fully construct a honeycomb lattice of atoms from a Bravais lattice in this example. This was made possible due to the correct choice of the basis, which, in this case, is made from two atoms and not just one. This is a general property of crystal. For solid crystals in nature, one can always describe its structure through a Bravais lattice given the correct choice of the basis. The example given here is that of an actual two-dimensional material that exists in nature. Graphene is a two-dimensional honeycomb lattice of carbon atoms. From the previous example, we saw that it can be described through a triangular or hexagonal two-dimensional Bravais lattices plus a basis of two atoms. The normalized primitive vectors making up the graphene Bravais lattice are highlighted in the yellow box. The basis is composed of two carbon atoms whose basis vectors are highlighted in the gray boxes. It is a common practice to note the two basis atoms in graphene by the labels A and B. To highlight this point, we carbon atoms A and B are represented by red and blue colors. Note that the A carbon atoms alone form a triangular lattice. The same is valid for the B carbon atoms. For this reason, we often refer to these as sublattices A and B. In this video, we went through the minimum set of definitions and concepts necessary to understand the behavior of electrons in crystalline solids, which we will do in the next video. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.